Hello, it's Dr. Alicia Granholm of aliciagranholm.com, helping you thrive in your life and leadership. And today we're going to talk singleness, dating, and the one. I'm going to share five pieces of advice on dating and singleness when you wish you were already married. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a new video to help you thrive in your life and leadership. So I have been happily married now for five years, but when I was single and wishing that I was married, these are the five pieces of advice that I wish someone would have given me about singleness and dating and finding the one. So piece of advice number one, you are not late. We all have our own unique timelines because we're all running our own unique race. There is nobody anywhere with a stopwatch or a deadline for you of the exact time when you are supposed to or should have been married already. So while you're waiting, live your best life. Live your life to the fullest. Before I even met my husband, I had completed two master's degrees. I traveled to 25 countries on six different continents. I'd owned two homes. I had been in full-time ministry for nearly a decade. I was 35 and still single. Do not buy the lie that you have to be married, that you have to have a lifelong partner to live your life to the fullest. You don't. And please stop living your life that way. Truly, this is the time to live your best life now. You will not regret it. So anything that's on your bucket list, anything that you've been saying like, I wish that someday I would, or someday I hope to, and then in the back of your mind, you're thinking, someday when I'm married, I hope to. No, stop right now. You go and live your best life today. Our days are numbered. So don't wait to live life until someday when you're married. Take that trip. Visit that museum. Go to that show. Buy yourself flowers. Don't wait. Live your best life today and you are not late. So tip number two, love yourself. Love who God created you to be. Before I met my husband, I was believing the lie that I was too much for somebody else. My emotions too big. My ambitions too much. My laugh too loud, my dreams too crazy, my hopes too big, that I was too educated, and that my passions would push somebody away. The reality is that I actually wasn't ready for my husband or to be married until I was fully confident in who God had created me to be and quit trying to be who I thought others wanted me to be. That I loved myself enough to know my worth and my own value enough to know if he didn't love all of me, then he just wasn't the one. Until I was ready to walk away from someone who was good enough to someone who I really genuinely, truly wanted to marry. If this is resonating with you right now, hit the like button and in the comments below, tell me what's on your bucket list. What have you been hoping and dreaming and wishing to do for years and haven't done yet? Comment below and let me know. So how do you actually meet someone, right? Well, for most of us, we actually need to meet someone new. You need to meet new people. Most of us who are living our best lives and successful lives have really regular schedules, right? Pretty regular routines. And we don't often meet new people outside of maybe meeting new people through our jobs, which is okay and, and might work if we continue to put our hope in, you know, meeting someone through work but we can also be intentional about meeting new people by putting ourselves in new spaces and places. The best ways that I have found to meet new people are to be doing the things you love in new places. The best time to meet new people is when we're genuinely being 100% our real authentic selves, when we're having fun, when we're laughing, when we're really not caring what other people are thinking about us in the moment. And so doing the things that we love often brings out the best in us. A mistake that I see Christian singles making all the time is only ever hanging out with the exact same group of friends and maybe trying new things, but never leaving space for themselves to actually meet or encounter new people in those places. So when my husband and I had met, I had just started getting into triathlons and I signed up for an Ironman 
and I wasn't really a runner. I know an Ironman requires, you know, a marathon, um, but I wasn't really a runner, but I had friends who were part of a running club and I kind of always thought, oh, it'd be fun to join them, but I'm not a runner. So I was really intimidated by it, um, but I needed to start running because I was training for an Ironman. So I show up at this running club and actually I met my husband the very first time I showed up to that run club. Now we didn't go out on our first date until eight months later, but here's the thing about that run club. I showed up every Saturday morning. I hadn't showered. I wasn't there to meet somebody, right? I mean, sure my radar was up, but my purpose in being there was to become a runner and was to train for my triathlon, this new ha hobby that I had gotten into. And so I was just me, right? Just 100% authentic me. And so when my husband and I finally went out on our first date, he'd actually never seen me showered. He'd never seen me with you know, non-running clothes on. He'd never seen me with makeup on, but it was so fun because I already knew that he knew the non-makeup, non-put-together Alicia. If you haven't met the one yet, it might be because you actually haven't met them. So how do you meet new people? Well, you gotta go to new places. <laughs> You got to meet new people. You need to break up your routine. And one of the best ways that I have found to do that is by picking up a new hobby or doing your hobby in new places and spaces and creating time and making time in those places to actually talk with people you don't already know. So then if you meet someone, how do you know they're the one? Well, it's really not as complicated as we make it out to be. You will love spending time with them. You will be attracted to them. You will not have to endure dating them. You won't have to convince yourself that you could make it work. You will want to keep seeing them. You'll want to keep spending time with them. You're your best version of yourself when you're around them. Now you might get insecure and wonder if they like you or if you really like them when you're not together with them, but when you are with them, in person, all those insecurities just melt away and you just enjoy being in their presence. One of my college friends put it this way, we just really liked spending time together. I remember my first date with Jake and it was five hours long. Did I go into it thinking it was gonna be five hours long? Absolutely not. And during our first date, I totally did something super embarrassing now that I look back on it. I was training for an Ironman at the time, so I was eating a ton of calories every day. And we'd met for an earlier dinner at a new restaurant, which was definitely a plus in my book. And we ate dinner and we're talking for quite a while. And I got up to use the restroom. And while I was using the restroom, I realized that I really needed to eat again. I was hungry again. So this date either needed to end right now or we needed to order more food there or go and get some dessert or something because I was starting to get really hungry. So I went back to the table and somehow nonchalantly brought up that I was hungry and needed more food. <laughs> so I think he must have said, do you wanna go out for dessert? And I said, sure, let's go. <laughs> but who does that on a first date? Who says, I'm hungry, I need more food? I guess I do. So how do you know they're the one? When you find yourself saying, I want to marry them, instead of, I could marry them, and my fifth piece of advice is actually my husband's favorite dating advice, which is get your reps in. As in the only way to actually get good at something is to do it. We can romanticize all day long about how much we wanna be married or how much we wanna date a certain person, but if we don't actually do it, if we don't actually put ourselves out there, go on some dates, say yes to people, say no to a third date because eh, they're really not the one. But unless we're willing to put ourselves out there, we literally cannot know if they're the one. I recently wrote on my blog about how my husband's dating advice got him his first date with me. And I'll put the link below in the description so you could read more about that. The simplicity of it is this. You just gotta put yourself out there and do it. Now, if you think a fear of failure or even perfectionism is getting in the way of you finding the one, then watch my video on how to overcome fear of perfectionism. The link is in the description below. Now, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with your friends who are struggling with their singleness and calling.